So I don't want you guys to come for me. I'm just trying to tell you guys what I believe are, you know, my truths about hair growth. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new, welcome. If you are not, welcome back. I'm so happy to be here. It's been such a long time. Today I'm doing a very different type of video, which is why I'm super excited and I'm hella happy. Um, we're doing an unpopular opinion video. Why? Because it is trending on YouTube and Twitter and I thought I would bring my very own edition. We're doing the unpopular hair growth edition because I don't feel like doing the natural edition. I feel like everyone has brilliant natural edition versions and I feel like let's bring something new to the table. So if you are interested, keep watching. But before we do that, let's jump into a few disclaimers. One, Sorry for the glare in my glasses. Unfortunately, um, I forgot to order new contacts and they didn't come in time. And so I'm stuck wearing glasses. So there will be an occasional glare, my bad. Two, everything that I say in this video is an opinion. So please don't take offense. A matter of fact, if you disagree, go ahead and put it down in the comment section. Just remember to keep it PC and positive because we wanna be positive here on this channel. Um, Please don't come for me because I will be saying some things that you guys don't agree with and that is okay. We are okay with that. We want to encourage positive discourse. We want to we want to talk about things. So yeah, go ahead, comment below. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you have been watching videos and you haven't subscribed, what's going on? I'm going to need you to hit that subscribe button. Um, so yeah, let's dive into these unpopular opinions. If I look down, it'd probably be because I'm looking at my notes because I have a bunch of things to say. Anyways, let's dive into this video. My first unpopular opinion actually is twofold. The first part of it is weaves are great for your hair. The second part is leaving your weaves in for two to three months is actually really good for retaining length. I know that there's a lot of conversations about how wearing weaves can be bad for your hair and I just don't subscribe to that opinion simply because I've actually seen my hair grow over time with weaves. That is if the weaves are installed properly because I've also had a couple of setbacks with weaves in which I had somebody who wasn't experienced enough and just didn't do weaves properly actually set me back way back. Um, and that's a conversation for another day. But I know that when I started getting weaves that actually were installed properly, I started to really retain length and actually see growth. So I'm sorry for those of y'all who don't love weaves. And when I say weaves, I mean sew-ins. They work for me. The second thing is I love rocking my weaves for two to three months. I know some of you guys are gonna be like, ew, two to three months, that's a super long time. Is your hair even clean? Yes, it is because I still do my normal cleansing, deep conditioning and moisturizing. It's just, I'm leaving it in for a longer period of time so I'm not over manipulating my hair and so that I can actually see the fruits of my labor and also get my money worth. You know weaves are expensive. Um, also, I mean, I think I picked up that technique because I started studying some um, weave growth programs. I know the Dream, I think it's called Dream Girls Hair Salon. They have this weave growth program in which people rock weaves for like three months and they get insane length retention and they see insane growth. And so I started doing that and I've started to notice myself, the longer you leave your weaves in, you get a better opportunity to actually retain all your length and see all of the growth. Just think about it. Like if you're not touching your hair at all for two to three months, depending on your hair growth rate, you can grow anywhere from an inch and a half to three full inches of hair. So that is my first unpopular opinion. Rocking weaves is actually good for your hair and rocking weaves for two to three months is even better for retaining length. My next unpopular opinion is oiling your scalp directly is bomb.com. Again, there have been more conversations about how you're not supposed to oil your scalp. I personally don't subscribe to that. I know that there have been discussions about how oiling your scalp is really bad for your hair or bad for your scalp and it clogs your pores and this, that, and the other. I personally don't believe that because I oil my scalp anywhere between every single day to every other day, depending on what my scalp feels like. And my hair has been growing just fine. So yeah, I don't know about everybody else, but oiling my scalp, A-okay. Especially if you add peppermint oil in it, did you know peppermint oil is the only essential oil that has been proven to promote hair growth? 
People want to say oiling your scalp is not good. Oiling it with some peppermint oil is bomb.com. My next unpopular opinion is mineral oil and petrolatum are okay in my book. I know some of you guys are going to come for me for this one because the natural hair community has shunned the heck out of petrolatum and mineral oil, but they work for me. I have been using the virgin hair fertilizer, which contains petrolatum, and honestly, it's been helping my hair grow. Like I've actually seen insane hair growth using the virgin hair fertilizer. I know I have a video, so I'll probably link it somewhere. But my point is um, I've been using petrolatum for the longest of times. I remember when I was young, we would use Blue Magic and oil our scalps with that. And that contained mineral oil and or petrolatum. And my hair grew just fine back then. And more recently, I've been using the virgin hair fertilizer, which you guys know contains petrolatum. And my hair has continued to grow just fine. So I personally don't have a problem with petrolatum or mineral oil. I am so sorry, y'all. I know y'all don't agree, but it's been in the products that I've used for so long. And honestly, my hair my scalp responds to it. So unpopular opinion, your girl's okay with petroleum and mineral oil. All right, the next one is you don't have to take hair vitamins to make your hair grow. Now you guys know this is a big one because I'm actually a huge advocate of using hair vitamins and I use them, I think they're great. Um, you know, I've used the main metabolism, I've used Shadavi, I've used the hair, skin, and nails by, I can't remember, Nature Valley or something like that. Either way, I love hair vitamins. However, more recently, I've been playing around with just drinking smoothies, dailies, or just taking a multivitamin, and I've noticed you get the same result. If you are eating your fruits and vegetables, and getting your daily servings in, you're probably not gonna need the hair vitamins because any excess nutrients that you get from the vitamins just get peed out. So you might not have to waste them coins on those hair vitamins. Now, I say that all to say, I'm not telling you don't get hair vitamins, I'm just saying if you want an alternative, you can use something else and that you don't have to take hair vitamins if you wanna grow your hair longer. My next unpopular opinion is in order to get the best results, you should use products from the same line. I know this is not what you wanna hear because we all have our beliefs that certain products work best on our hair, but I believe that products are, well, not even I believe, products are actually formulated to work, products within the same line are actually formulated to work together, they're pH balanced, and so they're meant to be used together. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that if a product line has 15 products, you use all 15 products. It just means that you would use the same shampoo, deep conditioner, and leave-in from the same line if those are the products that you're using for. My recommendation is to figure out what your hair porosity is, find a line that addresses your hair porosity and your hair needs, and then pick products from within that line and test them out. If the products don't work out, take it all back. Most stores actually have policies that enable you to like take a product back if you don't get results or if you they don't work for your hair if you use a certain amount. So take advantage of that so you can find the products that work for your hair and get your best hair results so you can retain your length and grow longer hair. My next unpopular opinion is braids, twists, passion twists, they're all good for your hair. I don't care what anybody says. I know that there's this whole discourse going around talking about how braids pull out your edges and pull out your hair. That only happens if you don't have them properly installed. If the person who installs your hair takes the time to braid, like make appropriate sized parts um, and not braid them tight, your hair will be just fine. Again, I have been notorious for rocking weaves, braids, twists, you name it to grow my hair out. Honestly, I'm doing just fine. So yes, if you moisturize your hair while in your protective style, i.e. your braids, your twists, whatever it is that you have in your hair, your hair will grow just fine. My next unpopular opinion is you don't have to use a gazillion products to help your hair grow. I know these companies are trying to sell, sell, sell you on purchasing their products, but you don't need to buy them. But I actually feel like all you need is a shampoo, um, a deep conditioner, a moisturizer, a leave-in, and some kind of oil that can serve as both a sealant and a scalp oil, and you're good to go. I think less is best, to be very honest. Just, you don't need that much. I genuinely believe that. I feel like when I pared down what my regimen was and what products I used in my regimen, that's when I started to see my hair flourish. And I So 
Those are my unpopular opinions. I'm curious to know what you think. If you agree with any of them, drop them down below in the comment section. If you have other unpopular opinions about hair growth, let me know. Um, oh, you know what? Just to throw in another one, this whole rice water situation, I think it's dope. I've been seeing more videos pop up about how rice water is breaking off people's hair and this, that, and the other. And honestly, again, rice water is one of those things that you have to follow up with a deep conditioner because it acts like a protein. It hardens your hair. It's a strengthening treatment. So if you're not supplementing that treatment with the moisturizing deep conditioner, then yes, your hair is gonna break off and you're not gonna see any growth. So yeah, those are my unpopular opinions. Let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, I'm so happy to be back and I'm sorry if I'm all over the place. I'm not even filming on my camera. I'm actually filming on my phone and honestly, it's weird. It's weird. Like I'm not even sure where I'm looking. Sometimes I'm looking at myself in the screen and other times I'm looking at the actual, well, what I think is the whole. So bear with me. I'll be back home soon enough. Um, again, thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Deuces.